Welcome to another episode of Merch Design. My name is Charlie Pangus. This is episode seven already, guys, and we have so many more episodes to come. Today, we're taking a simple font and turning it into something amazing to put on merch, okay? So if you guys are interested in that sort of thing, you clicked on the right video. With that being said, let's go ahead and design some merch. Today I'm using Illustrator to show you guys how to make this merch design right here. And this is a really cool one because it's got some 3D stuff going on, but nonetheless it's a really basic design and there's really not a lot to it, but I'm gonna try to simplify it for all of you beginners out there. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I wanna do is go up to File, New, and we're gonna make a new artboard. I'm just gonna make it a five inch by five inch artboard and you can do CMYK. You can keep everything basically the same. You don't need to adjust anything else besides the dimensions. Again, it's five inches by five inches. We're gonna hit create and now we have an artboard that we are ready to start on. So let's go ahead and just type out design. So I'm hitting T on my keyboard and I'm just typing out design in all caps. And from here, what we wanna do is we wanna go up to our character palette or whatever you want to call this and you just want to type in the font that we're going to be using so i chose this one called Gru moon it's a demo font and you can just google this and you will find it pretty easily but we're just going to make sure this is centered to the artboard and just for safe measures let's go ahead and duplicate it by holding an option click and drag to the left and we have a duplicate copy and just so i know what i'm doing i'm actually going to copy these over to our new artboard just so i can see them and use them as a reference if i need to and then we are gonna be using this little twinkle star or star, whatever you wanna call it, um, later on in the video. So we're just gonna keep that right there. One thing that's really important is being able to distinguish your 3D effect from your actual typeface. So this is black. It's really gonna be hard to see the 3D effect with black selected. So I'm just gonna go up to my swatches and make it a more poppy color. I'll just go with this red color. And if we wanted to, we can space out the um, text a little bit more by holding an option and just hitting the right arrow key. One more thing I wanna do is duplicate design one more time just in case I need that red version of it. And we are gonna be duplicating a lot, but this is just to make our life easier later on. And this is all considered step number one, right? This is just the prep before we start making this design 3D. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go on to step number two now, which is selecting the design, the font, and it's gonna have this little transform box around it. That's perfect. We wanna go up to effect, we wanna hit 3D, and we wanna hit extrude and bevel. This is where the effect is going to take place, okay? And these degrees are the exact degrees that you're going to want. So just go ahead and copy those down and um, just make sure everything looks the same as mine. Let's go and do that one more time just so you guys can see what I did. So I'm gonna drag another copy of design up. All I did is I went up to effect, 3D, I pressed extrude and bevel, once you do that, you just copy all of these off axis front degrees down exactly how I have it and just hit OK and that is it. I'm going to delete the duplicate copy because I don't need it anymore and let's drag this one up a little bit. So there's a couple things that we really need to do before making this effect actually work. And one of those things that we need to do is actually selecting it and we need to go up to object expand appearance. Okay, what we're going to do is we're actually going to select certain parts of this and um, copy them and then merge them all together. So again, we're going to go back one more time. Again, step three, all you have to do is go up to object expand appearance. That's it. And it's going to outline everything. But now we're going to move on to step number four, which is selecting the front faces here and making a copy of them. So we're going to select the front faces and there's going to be a specific reason why we're doing this. You're going to see in a second, we're going to go ahead and copy that. So command C shift command V. So now we have a duplicate copy in front. That was step number four, separating the front elements from the 3d effect. So now we have the front faces separated. Just remember that you do have a duplicate copy. So if we drag that down, that is our main copy. And for step number five, our goal is to actually merge the background, the 3D elements with the front face, because remember we duplicated it. We're gonna merge all this together and make it one color. So we're just gonna go up here and we're gonna hit unite under shape modes. So we're gonna unite all that and it's gonna change color. And if we wanted to, we can make it a different color just so you can see what's happening. And as you can see, we have a separate layer now for the 3D elements in the back. That was step five, merging this back element together. So now we have the front face, which we made a duplicate of, and then we have the back merged together. We are good to go now. We're gonna turn this back element into a stroke. And in order to do that, you just go all the way down here to your swatch color, which is your fill X. And we just wanna go ahead and hit this little arrow 
and it's gonna swap it with the stroke and you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. And this is beautiful, this is what we wanted. Now all we have to do is select our back element and change it from that gray color to the red color to match our text and we are good to go. Don't worry about the small stuff because we will adjust a bunch of things eventually but we're not quite there yet. Um, and then from here we can mess with the stroke. So let's go ahead and make it um, inside. I think inside would probably work the best, let's see. I also did notice that our front element was a different color so I just made that the same red. And then now we're gonna clean it up. So step six is basically cleaning up anything that needs to be cleaned up, really simple. So I'm gonna double click on this element right here and I'm just going to delete it. So just this front element right here. I deleted this weird part where the E was because I thought that looked really weird and then everything else looks pretty good so um, that's pretty much step six is just cleaning up everything that needs to be cleaned up hopefully i'm on the right step i think i'm losing track a little bit but it's fine we're gonna make it i promise but nonetheless we are doing really good right now we have our front element separated from our back 3d element and our 3d element is a solid fill um, or a transparent fill with a stroke and we change that stroke to the inside spend time on step six just cleaning up your design and making sure there's little things that are not poking out or anything like that. And obviously on mine, the only thing I had to fix was um, above the E, I had this little part that was just sticking out that I did not like. We're gonna fix all that later on. So I just deleted that part for now just to clean it up. But this is what we're left with and we're doing really good so far. So that was step number six. Step number seven is going to be laying down some lines with the Pathfinder tool, which is gonna be the same thickness as our outside um, 3D element stroke. So our current stroke for the outside 3D element is one point, right? Which is our, our basically our shadow, right? So it's one point. Remember that because that's going to be really, really important. So the next thing we want to do is we just want to drag out some lines on step number seven. What I want to do is make a new layer for these lines so I can keep track of them. So we're just going to make a new layer under the layers palette and I'm going to name this lines. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our pathfinder tool and we're just going to make sure we have the red selected for the stroke. And then we want to make sure the fill is transparent and that the stroke is on one point for now. We can adjust that later on and we're just going to start dragging some lines out. And again, we are going to fix these later, so don't worry about it being perfect for now. But again, we just want to make sure we are kind of getting the same uh, look that we had before. So one thing that will really help this out actually is taking this original. What I did is I brought the pre outline version in just so I could see where these strokes are supposed to be just like this. So I just wanna make sure everything is staying consistent. And then if you wanted to, you can just use the scissors tool and cut what you don't want out. If you guys didn't know already, you can use the scissors to cut these lines if you wanted to. And then we're just gonna drag that in place. And it is the same stroke width, so obviously everything is matching up. So we're just gonna to continue to do this until we fill up the entire 3D effect, right? Like all of these lines need to be here to sell this effect. Again, it's a lot of work, you know, this is definitely not an effect that takes like five minutes. You're going to spend some time on it, but it's totally worth it when it's all said and done. Step number eight is done. I laid down all my line work and this is what it looks like. It's a little rough. There's definitely some cleaning up we need to do. We're gonna fix that right now. We're gonna take these lines and we're gonna expand them first and foremost, but then we're also gonna go in wireframe mode and make small adjustments to make it match our front face. And you're gonna see what I'm saying in a second. So once you're selecting lines, and again, you should have made sure that your lines are on a separate layer. And if you did, you just hit this little circle next to lines. We're gonna go to object, expand, and then we're gonna fill the stroke and the actual fill itself, hit okay. And this is what you're left with. As soon as you expand those, you should be ready to go. Now what we can do is start making micro adjustments. So what we're gonna do is hit Command Y on our keyboard, and this is going to be wireframe mode, okay? And this is a really important mode because we can make these small adjustments to actually make it look like these lines belong on our front face because right now they're not totally meeting where they should, and that looks awkward, right? 
So in order to fix that, we're just gonna zoom in on certain parts and not all parts are going to need this, but some parts will. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on this and just make these small adjustments real quick. So using our direct selection tool, we are going to just select this and move it to where the lines meet, which would be about right here. And you're gonna do this for everything that you see that needs fixed. So this is literally all you have to do. There's nothing more to it. And I think this part is almost good, but not really actually. I lied. <laughs> it needs to be fixed. You just need to make sure that some of these, you know, meet where they should meet. So like it was all the way down here and I moved it all the way up on the S and that looks way better. and you're gonna exit wireframe mode and just see what it looks like. If you feel like it's good, it probably is good, but if you feel like it needs some more adjusting, just adjust it. As simple as that. And I do have this weird thing going on right here, so I need to try to fix this. I don't know why. Okay, so that fixed it. So I had this extra little um, anchor point that didn't need to be there, so I just used my minus anchor tool or delete anchor point tool and it fixed that right away. So again, I made some small, small adjustments. We're gonna go ahead and make another artboard. So just go up to artboards. If you don't see that, go up to window and just make sure artboards is selected. And we're gonna add a new layer. Um, not a new layer, but a new artboard. <laughs> That's what I meant, but it's basically like adding a new layer. Go ahead and click the plus sign to add a new artboard. You can do this as many times as you want. I just need another one. Now that we have this duplicate copy, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my star and drag it over here. And we can make this any color we want. It really depends on your style but we're just gonna randomly drag these into place wherever we see fit. And obviously our duplicate copy is not on the right layer, so we need to copy this and put it on layer one, and now it's on the correct layer. We're just gonna drag them randomly, and I found these on Google and I just image traced them, honestly. You can just find these anywhere. Just look up stars or twinkle stars, whatever you wanna look up. You'll be able to find them pretty easy. Maybe one needs to be down here somewhere, I don't know. Again, this is completely random. And if you wanted to color it, the best way to do it is to go down to the Adobe color themes. If you don't see that, go to window and just make sure color themes is checked. And then from here, we can just choose a color theme. So let's type in, I don't know, let's type in tattoo. I found this one that's really cool. It's called Sailor Jerry Postcard. You can type that exact one in if you wanna use it. So now that I have that color palette, I'm gonna go ahead and select my design. We're gonna go up to edit and we're gonna go to, where's it at, where's it at? edit colors and we're gonna go to recolor artwork. And then from here we can actually select that Sailor Jerry color palette and it will change it to um, the, the new one, if that makes sense. So we selected Sailor Jerry and it's gonna take all the current colors and change it to the new colors, just like that. And then from here you can adjust it if you wanted to and you can always like randomly uh, change the saturation and brightness or randomly change color order, see? and you can do this as many times as you want. And let's make a separate version as well, actually. Let's make one for a light and dark shirt. So I'm gonna actually recolor this one and just make it a lighter color for a dark shirt. I found this lighter color, so I'm actually gonna try this one first. And I have my mock-up pulled up right here. And we're just gonna make it a little darker for the shirt color. And I think this would look cool as a pocket tee, but we're just gonna make it bigger so you guys can see it on the mock-up. So something like that. Let's go ahead and grab our other one, which is our black. I like this one a lot. We're gonna paste that in place as a smart object. It really doesn't matter though. We're gonna hide our other version. If you guys wanna buy mockups, I have some available on my website for really cheap. So if you guys want some professional mockups, feel free to go to my website. But this looks super clean, guys. Oh my gosh. I love this black and white look. Don't forget to check the description below for helpful links on Illustrator shortcuts and the font that we used today in this video. That is all really helpful information, guys, so you don't want to miss it. And also, you can follow me on Instagram at Charlie Pangus if you guys just want to say hi and check out my work. And if you guys want some amazing wholesale blanks, don't forget to check out Bella Canvas in the description below. They now have a retail section, so if you guys don't have a wholesale license, you can still buy Bella Canvas, and they do have some of the best cotton tees I have ever seen in the industry. Check it out in the the description below but that is it for merch design episode 7 just like that we got through it and I hope you guys learned something new today if you did subscribe hit that thumbs up button and turn on notifications my name is Charlie Pangus keep creating guys keep being awesome I'll catch you in the next episode peace